Welcome to the Plato Paradigm, a paradigm shift in reading Plato's dialogues. Episode 55, Euthyphro 11, C to E. Socrates has just asked Euthyphro to tell him again what the holy is. And Euthyphro, for whatever reason, possibly because he just wants to avoid answering, says that he doesn't know because whatever he proposes doesn't stay still. And then Socrates says, What you say, Euthyphro, seems to be of our ancestor Daedalus. Daedalus in Greek, Daedalus in Latin, Daedalus in English. He's a famous mythical inventor who is involved in the Minotaur story for several reasons. One of them is that he made the bull for Pasiphae, the wife of Minos. He made the labyrinth where the Minotaur was kept. And he invented the wings which he and Icarus used to fly away. He warned Icarus not to go too near the sun, but Icarus didn't listen to him. The wax melted and Icarus felt his death. This, all of this, is irrelevant to what Socrates is saying. Socrates is calling Daedalus his ancestor. Why would he be Socrates' ancestor. He actually says our ancestor, but I don't think he means Euthyphro's ancestor, because Daedalus, among other things, is a sculptor, and Socrates comes from a family of sculptors. His father was a sculptor. We may assume that because professions are passed from father to son, that Socrates himself was at one point a sculptor a profession he evidently gave up as he wasn't a sculptor in later life and was consequently rather poor. Daedalus, as a sculptor, is famous for making statues so lifelike that they appeared to be living, they appeared to move. And this is the point being made here, that Euthyphro's proposals are like Daedalus's statues. They are set up, but then they appear to move. Euthyphro had said that whatever he proposes doesn't want to remain in one place, and that is why Socrates had said that what Euthyphro said seems to have been of Daedalus. But now he goes on, kai eimen autai go elegon kai etithemen Isos an me episcoptes hos arakai emoi katatene kenu sungenean taintois logois erga pudidraske, kai ukethele menen hop wantis autathe. Nunde saigar hai hypotheses esin. And if I were saying and positing them, perhaps you would have joked that. According to my relationship with that man, Daedalus, my works in words run away and do not wish to remain wherever someone puts them. But now they are your hypotheses. Notice that it is Socrates who introduces Daedalus. It is Socrates who raises the whole idea of making a joke at his expense because he's related to Daedalus as a fellow sculptor, but then points out that the one who is creating the moving objects, in this case the hypotheses, is Euthyphro, not Socrates, which is what Euthyphro had said. Socrates isn't putting words into Euthyphro's mouth. At the same time, he has now allowed Euthyphro to think of a comeback. Instead of him moving propositions or making propositions which move, he can now say, well, actually, Socrates, you are the one who's making things move. And where would he get this idea from? 
from Socrates, who has just said you could have made this joke. Socrates finishes off with another prod in this direction. He really wants Euthyphro to react and say that Socrates is the one causing things to move. Alnu de tinos de skomatos, ugare thelus in soi menen, hos soi doke. There's a need for another joke. In other words, the joke against me won't work here. For they don't wish to remain for you, as it also seems to you yourself. Euthyphro now acts the way Socrates expects. But basically, Socrates has manipulated him into replying as he now does. And this isn't simply Socrates predicting what Euthyphro would do. He has pushed him to this. Emoide do que schedonti tu autus gomatos o Socrates des thai talagomena. It seems to me that uh, these things being said need the same joke, Socrates. Togar peri ienae autois tuto, kai me menen ento auto, uc ego e mi ho entithes, ala su moidokes ho daidolos, epe em uge heneca, emenenan tauta hutos. For they are going around and not staying in the same place, I'm not the instigator, but you seem to be the Daedalus, since these things would stay thus for the sake of me. In other words, as far as Euthyphro is concerned, he would be happy if nothing changed, if he gives an answer, a proposal, and it stays. He doesn't like the fact that things keep changing. This seems to be what Socrates wanted to hear because now he replies and he's still using the imagery of Daedalus. Kintu nuo ara o hetaire eke nutu andros de notoros gegonenai ten technen tosuto hoso homen ta autu mona epoye umenonta e gode Prostois emo tu hos eoike kaita alotria. So, my friend, I seem to be more amazing than that man in this art, inasmuch as he made only his own not moving, but I have made, in addition to mine, so it seems also other peoples. In other words, Euthyphro is not to blame for his proposals moving and changing. It is Socrates who not only makes his own proposals move, but as it appears, also makes Euthyphro's proposals change. He carries on. Kai deta tu to moi tes technes estin comprototon, oti ako nemi sophos, e bulomen gar an moitus logus menen, kai akinetos, he truth thy, malon e proste daidalu sophia tatantalu chremata genestai. And really, this bit of my art is the most clever, the most sophisticated that I am an expert against my will, for I would have wished my logoi, my arguments, to remain and to be set up unmovingly, rather than acquiring, in addition to the expertise of Daedalus, also the riches of Tantalus. Kaituton men aden. And enough about these things. This is an indication that Socrates has stopped talking about Daedalus, and in fact we are about to go on to the next proposition about the holy. So we see that the passage about Daedalus has been a bridge between two central arguments, or two central propositions about the holy. 
One interesting thing in this passage, which Platonists don't like to look at, is that Socrates admits to being an expert on something, albeit unwillingly. He can create things which change, and he makes other people's creations change as well. This is a form of expertise, apparently. Now, what expertise would make people's opinions change? Obviously, you might think this is rhetoric, the art of persuasion. Where there is a need for persuasion, it implies that a position is being changed. But in fact, positions tend not to be changed. They are simply arrived at. And a rhetorician uses the opinions the audience already has in order to get them to reach the correct conclusion. There is another art which does deal with changing opinions in order to arrive at the truth. And this art is, of course, dialectic. And Socrates never says that he has the art of dialectic. This is the closest he comes to it. He is an expert on it, but he is an expert unwillingly, he says. He would actually rather that his opinions didn't change, that his logoi didn't change. And this is actually uh, plausible because if he knows and understands everything, his arguments wouldn't change because knowledge itself, understanding itself, if it is accurate knowledge, will not change. This is something to aim at. Socrates has an expertise because he differs from people like Euthyphro in that he changes not only his own opinions or arguments, but he changes the opinions, positions or whatever of other people as well. And he says that he is an expert unwillingly, and we have to wonder about that, because if he was unwilling to change the opinions or arguments of other people, he could simply not talk to them. But this is what he does all the time. Socrates talks to people, he gets them to examine their opinions, and he leads them through question and answer to refute themselves, to require them to change their opinion. So when Socrates says that he is unwilling, even here he is lying. This is something Socrates does all the time. He never actually gives us a completely true statement.